really good time today and have some fun. We're going to play with potashu. Potashu uh, means literally cabbage dough. But don't get upset, there's no cabbage in this recipe, but I'll explain it as I go along where the name came from. Uh, I have a cup of water and one stick of butter that has just come to a boil. I'm going to take it off the heat, add a uh, tablespoon of sugar, a pinch of salt, and one cup of flour. And I'm going to mix that around quickly just to get all that flour incorporated into the mixture. And then we're going to put it back onto the heat for about 30 seconds, continually mixing until the bottom of the pan becomes clean and the mass becomes a big lump. And that's about it, 30 seconds. I'm going to get this out of the way. And now we're going to go to our mixer. I'm going to put this mixture in the mixer. You can see all the steam coming off, so I want to kind of let that cool down just a little bit. So I'm just going to put it on low and let it just whisk some of that warmth out of it. And then I'm going to add three eggs, um, each one, one at a time, until it's all well incorporated. You know, I love food history, and I was reading about Padashu the other day, and I realized it was it's almost... 500 years old, this recipe. I think that's quite amazing. Okay. And now we're going to add our eggs one at a time. And you want this mixture to become well incorporated. No, it's going to be cohesive. You don't want it to be melting. Now, in preparation of it, I have two pastry bags, one large one and one smaller one because we're going to make different kinds of things with the same dough today. On my big one, I just have a plain round tip. That's going to be used for puffs and eclairs. And then I have a small one with a little tiny tip um, that's going to be used for making swan heads. Let's see what I mean in a minute. Okay, this is getting close. Very, very warm. It's okay. And there is the pot of shoe dough. This stuff is so much fun. It just you can play with it and make all different kinds of shapes. These are the things that when you go to the county fair and you get a cream puff, this is what it's made out of pot of shoe dough. I'll put just a little bit in the little bag. Not much more than that. So we're just doing demonstrations here today. Different sizes and shapes of what you can do with this dough. This is all also the stuff that is used to make eclairs. And we will make some of those too. Here ready. And they are lined with parchment paper. Here's our big dough. Some of the air out of it. And I'm gonna make little puffs. And I said it was cabbage pastry or a cabbage dough. When these puffed after they came out of the oven, they had like an irregular shape and somebody said they look like little cabbages. So they called it parashu, shu meaning cabbage. And I'll make a few of these. Show you the different things you can do with them later. I'm gonna make one larger one. Show you that later too. Then we'll make Some eclairs, mini eclairs. And you'll notice that 
the dough has a little point on it. We'll get rid of that in a minute. So I go down and I come back. And I'll make a few more of the regular puffs. And then we'll fix these with some water. I'm going to get a little one. I'm going to make some swans. You'll see in the end what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the body first. I'm going to make like an elongated heart. Come back. And then just fill in the middle. Make, make a few of these. see that we're going to make, these will be the bodies and the wings when we're done. I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Now, because these will bake at different times, I'm putting them on different sheets. That's the body. And now we're going to use the smaller bag to create the swan head and the neck. And we're going to make a few of these. I make a little dot of dough. And then make almost like a giant two. I'm going to take the tip off of this. No, maybe not. Yeah, maybe I'll leave it on. I don't want to make one one way and one another way. So a dot. And then you don't want to make these too thin. And the reason I make that bottom, which is the two and then the bottom, the bottom is going to give it some stability when we put the swan's necks into the bodies. Again, I'll show you in the construction when we go to make them later on. Okay, and there's our swan's head. With the tip, I'm just going to drag out the head just a little bit to give it a little bit of a point, which would be the beak. Just a little. Now, the oven is heating to 400 degrees. And what I'm going to do, those are fine, but see how you've got these tips sticking up. And a wet your finger, push those down. Because then you'll have this one big thing sticking up, and you don't want that. Okay. Now, since the necks are smaller, they're only going to take maybe 10 minutes in the oven, whereas the rest of these puffs and everything else will probably take more like 20 minutes. Again, with the puffs and the eclairs, I'm pushing down those little things that are sticking up. And these are mini puffs. You can make big ones, but they're going to take a lot longer in the oven. With the eclairs, I'm making lines down the center. These should make the eclairs rise evenly instead of bit by bit, so you don't have bumps. All I do is raise up that end. Into the oven, they're all going to go. Again, I'm going to bake the larger ones for about 20 minutes, 20, 21 minutes. And I'm going to keep checking the swan necks because they're so light and delicate. They should take about 8 to 10 minutes. So I'll put those in and we'll see what they look like when they come up. puffs out of the oven and one thing I did do when I took them out of the oven first is I took a little knife and put a little slit in the side of every one and that sort of lets some air inside so they don't end up being mushy 
These were in, the necks and heads were in approximately 10 minutes. These were in 20 minutes. Now, I gotta let these really cool off before we can do any decorations. So we're gonna leave them to cool and then we'll come back and I'll show you various ways that we can serve them. Remember, we made these elongated hearts and that's the way they came out. And that's gonna be the body. That's gonna be the back and the front. I'm gonna do two of them. So what you do is put it on its side and just cut off maybe the top third carefully. A serrated knife helps you. Put that aside and do the same thing with the other one. Okay. Now, with the top that you cut off, you're going to cut them in half and those are going to become the wings. Two bodies, two wings. Now, we have the dessert plate. Here I have some raspberry um, sauce that I made myself by taking frozen raspberries and mixing with sugar, putting them in a, a food processor, and then straining up the seeds. You can use chocolate sauce here if you want to. I'm going to use my raspberry sauce, and I'm going to make a swimming pond. And then I'm going to put two swans on the plate. All right, I'm going to use whipped cream from a can, but it's the real cream. It's not, you know, that synthetic stuff. I prefer you use regular cream, but for time-wise here, we're doing this. And you just make, make a pretty good pie. Okay. Then you put the neck and the head on before you put the um, wings on. There's one neck and head. Put it down in, take one, uh, this one, take another neck and head, and then you can put the wings on. How cute is this? And then to finish it off, we can put some more dollops. Uh, raspberry sauce and flick some wings in there. Look at that. Now, if you serve that as a dessert, that would be the wow that people would go, oh my goodness. And you know what? The good thing is, it's a small dessert. They're not going to feel like they went home eating big heavy chocolate cake. It's light. It's not that fattening. You could use low fat whipped cream. It's really a good dessert and it is the only thing is you got to put it together sort of just before you're going to serve it. This will stay like this probably 20 minutes to a half an hour before the cream starts going a little oozy. But look at that. Beautiful. Here are some of our cream puffs all done and they are uh, cooled down and now we can start working with them. I'm going to show you three different preparations. Actually four, but three right now. So here are two of the small puffs. And I am going to just, with a serrated knife, makes life easier, cut them in half. And you can see how the middles get hollow. Perfect little vessel for something. So on this one, we're going to put some vanilla ice cream. tops on. And I have some chocolate ganache here. And ganache is nothing more than equal parts of cream and chocolate melted together till they're smooth. This is delicious stuff. And we're going to just drizzle that over. Okay. And there's one dessert. It's probably going to leak, but that's okay. I can lick it up. Second dessert. Another way to serve these, if that's, you don't want ice cream, we go back with our can of cream. Put our little tops on. So these are the ice cream, these are the cream. We can put one with chocolate sauce. We can put one with raspberry sauce. 
a seed stuck in there. That's okay. All right, I guess it's not okay. Now I have it all over everything. All right, well. Here, make it real simple. So there's two of our ways to serve them. And now we go to the pastry cream, which is absolutely my favorite of all of them. So we have our mini eclairs. Open those up. And I have two of the puffs, which are nothing more than round eclairs. And then here's our pastry cream, which I put in another bag. And fill the your eclairs. Fill the little boats. There's two of the puffs. Two of the little boats. So whatever happens to be your preference, those are great desserts. Hope you try them because they're really easy to make. So here's our last way to serve puffs. I'm sure there's many more, but the one I'm going to show you today. We've done some sweet ones. We've done puffs with pastry cream, puffs with ice cream, puffs with cream. We've done swans. We've done a, uh, a coffee cake that was made with a puff and almond. Now we're going to do something savory. I made a bigger puff and I still have some smaller ones. And here I have some warm chicken a la king that you can take and fill up the puff. And there's an entree. Or you can even take little ones and put a little bit of the chicken in there and little hors d'oeuvres. So as you can see, there's a lot of ways that you can do pastries and savory things with puff pastry and it's a lot of fun it's easy i really hope you try it i think you'll have a lot of fun doing it